Good afternoon, everyone. <laughs> Thanks for joining this panel uh, right after lunch. My name is uh, Ivan Fernandez, um, and I do I organize a, a conference in Barcelona called Game Lab. Um, but today, today we are here to talk to, uh, about virtual reality. We've been hearing about virtual reality for a while. Actually, virtual reality is an old technology. I say old because um, before everyone here was born, there were already some virtual reality uh, experiences out there. And I, I say technology because um, even though we always imagine virtual reality as something more like a, um, I mean, Im immersive in a, in a, in not only in a sensual, sensual way, but in a, in a mental way, what we have today, what we call today virtual reality, looks like uh, it's more technology than, than anything else. Uh, to speak about this topic and to find out why we as developers should be interested in paying attention to virtual reality today, we have a panel of experts here with me. Um, I'm going to start with Scott Humphreys that has a lot of experience in, in many of the major companies in the games industry. And now you will tell us later, but you, you have started your, new, your own venture uh, recently, right? Partnering, yes. OK. Mihai Pohontu, that uh, many of you know already. And uh, it's uh, working for Samsung. That is one of the top, if not the top, hardware uh, company uh, trying to push uh, virtual reality technology nowadays in the world. Um, uh, Josh Naylor, representing Unity, that is probably the biggest or, or the, the main company, software company, trying to push virtual reality as well in the world. And uh, Ovidiu Georgi, did I, did I say it right? Uh, that is representing um, uh, Ubisoft, that is one of the, of the game producers that is also working in virtual reality and doing more amazing stuff on virtual reality so we can enjoy in the, in the next few months. Um, I would like to, to, to make the panel very interactive in a way and, uh, and, and not to be um, very um, um, politically correct, in, if, if we can. And I would like to start with a question. Wait, you want us to be politically incorrect? Yeah. OK. Yeah, that's, that's what that's I'm That's no problem for. for me. Yeah, because, because we are all developers, and we are investing a lot of time and money and resources and, and illusion uh, in doing something for for something that uh, some some people is, some companies are promising, and I want to make sure that we're doing the right thing. So, first question would be, why do we need virtual reality now after so many years? Why do we need virtual reality now? I mean, is it is it that we are getting bored, or did, did we need new experiences? That is, what is the, the reason why virtual reality is hitting I, now? I think personally, uh, anybody who's maybe tried it before three years ago, still thought it was amazing, still thought this could be a future of entertainment and gaming, but it was just nowhere near accessible. Whereas now with, uh, with home PCs able to run most of the, most of the content or even uh, mobile phones, such as Galaxy S6, like that kind of power in your pocket, uh, no one's ever seen until three or four years ago, really. So that's why it's suddenly available to everybody. Mm -hmm. Technology. So technology is, uh, is obviously ready to, uh, to accommodate the virtual reality in a, a commercially feasible way, right? So I think that is the um, economic nature of uh, why virtual reality is uh, uh, accessible today and why it's emerging as a technology. Uh, but I think, you know, from another perspective, uh, your question harks back to, you know, our need as humans to mm -hmm. manufacture universes. Um, we use our imagination for that primarily. Um, and any form of technology that allows us to Im Im immerse ourselves in a richer universe, uh, in a more sen fully sensorial universe, uh, represents an evolution. So in a sense, we've always been ready for virtual reality. We haven't been necessarily able to deliver that experience in a commercially feasible way. So now we are. Um, and I think it's part of the evolutionary process for us to be able to manufacture worlds that feel very real, uh, but they are still pieces of art, you know, they are works of art. I personally think um, uh, because of the immersion. Mm -hmm. Basically, this is what VR provides us. 
another level of immersion. Mm -hmm. And technically, this is the moment. But that's really, that you're, you're, most of you are saying that we, we, we can do it now, right? I mean, we have the, 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 the technology to do it now. But does this technology really meet that need? I mean, is, is it going to, to be enough to make that dream come true? And if it, if it is, it's going to be at home where we're going to experience that. I, I, can, I don't know if we should be experiencing these kind of uh, things more like in Disneyland, uh, kind of Universal Studios like resource, like uh, out of home entertainment. I mean, it should, shouldn't be that before uh, than, than experiences at home with just a headset. It's a step Couldn't be right, disappointed it's a in step a way. in the right direction. Uh, I mean, VR, yes, it's, very, it's still constrained to the area that can be tracked, but do you think maybe 10, 15 years when you have AR commercially viable and in games, when you can run around your house shooting zombies, as, as you do as a kid, playing with your action men or, or Barbie or whatever, and you're pretending the guy is running through your house, going down your banister on your stairs, like falling from, from, the, from the roof in the parachutes, like that will be available in the home where you can just run around with a water gun shooting zombies because your full home will be an AR experience. Mm -hmm. At what stage of evolution is VR now, from your perspective? I mean, which, which, in, in how evolved it is? You say you're, it's ready, but how evolved it is? How, how, how much more we can expect in the next few years? Well, um, one thing is, is sure, it's ready to be uh, given to the public and to be experienced by the most uh, ma majority of the public. Uh, I think the way that people is going to experience VR is going to be with mobile first. Because of the accessibility, because of the fact that uh, it's way easier to uh, get uh, uh, a quick experience and uh, just get an opinion. Mm -hmm. So that's my opinion. Uh, look, I mean, purely from a standpoint of like, you know, mm -hmm. graphics acceleration, I think uh, there's much that we can still go in having a truly uh, immersive uh, VR experience. There are also some issues still with uh, head tracking, uh, some issues with, uh, you know, the effect that you have being in a VR environment for long, per long periods of time, uh, disorientation, you know, lack of balance, things of that sort. So uh, I wouldn't say that technology is rudimentary, but that would be a little too harsh, but I think we have a long way to go in perfecting the VR technology. Um, I think in certain areas, uh, like 360 video, we're there. Like we are able to display, you know, 4K video in a uh, 360 uh, environment, in a virtual reality environment. We can uh, deliver that video effectively uh, through several uh, applications currently in the market, including Samsung VR uh, uh, that runs on top of the Oculus uh, SDK. Um, I do think, like Ovidio said, that uh, you know, mobile VR is uh, the entry point for the mass market, and that's where we'll see a lot of growth in the next period of time. Um, I do think that, again, most of the people coming to VR will experience the 360 video as the primary form of entertainment, and then games, of course. And in games, as far as mobile VR is concerned, uh, there is tremendous improvement that could in indeed happen. Um, you know, Samsung's mobile phones power the Gear VR. Um, and Samsung's uh, strategy is to position the mobile phone, uh, mobile phone as a purveyor of console-like gaming experiences. So our strategy all the way up to 2020 is to gradually increase uh, processing power uh, and graphics processing power to match a PS4 a console uh, in terms of output. And if you think about it, that, that it's a tremendous uh, growth and um, quite exciting. And once we get there, we can say that we can offer as rich of an experience on mobile VR as the current raft of uh, AAA uh, VR uh, purveyors do. So the, the Rift, the uh, Vive, and of course the PlayStation VR. Mm -hmm. I think the technology is there for what it needs to do today, which is porn. Mm -hmm. Right. That's right. I was sensing a little bit too much political correctness, so, no, so I, I wanted I'm, to bring it back. I'm telling you some. I'm, my my next question is about engagement. And, uh, <laughs> so. uh, but in all seriousness, I mean, look, I think the, I think looking at the platform uh, as a hardware platform is probably the wrong way to look at it. It's a, it's a, it, it's a interface platform, right? Mm -hmm. And the thing, the question we need to ask ourselves is: this interface and the and the evolution of the interface is this today? Is that enough? Um, mm -hmm. 
you know, I don't think it is. Mm -hmm. I personally, I think that there's a lot of issues with mm -hmm. the interface for a lot of devices right now. Um, and, you know, I think you really haven't seen that experience. I mean, anybody who's played with it knows how awesome it can be. Mm -hmm. um, and I think it's innovative, but I don't think it's like where it's going to really take off yet. Yep. And I see that like down the road. I see that like maybe like five, maybe even 10 years yep. down I the road. Like we get the Star Trek holodeck, right? That's what I'm, that's what I'm seeing as the future. I totally agree with you. By the way, I shouldn't be, uh, I shouldn't agree with you because I'm the moderator, but I totally agree with you. <laughs> <laughs> the porn but, part though, right? But, but the porn part, <laughs> that's, that's interesting. You, yeah. No, um, uh, what my, I wonder uh, if I'm the only one that don't really get engaged with, uh, with VR right now. I mean, you, you all, most of the people that are here have tried uh, VR uh, headsets and, and probably all of them already. And I wonder how many of you want to come back to that experience. So how much time are you, are you spending in that experience? I mean, apart from, from, the, from the way I want to try this and you, I try it for a few minutes, um, uh, how much is the people getting back or wanting that experience truly from your perspective, from your experience? Um, so I'll give you a personal dimension of this and then I'll, I'll cite some uh, studies as well. But at the personal level, I can tell you that my kids absolutely love VR. And if they would have an opportunity to you know, play a console or play with a VR device, they would always choose the VR device. They are so enthralled by it that they find it you know, amazing. And you know, again, we're talking about the Gear VR here, which I have in my home. They don't have the most amazing games. You can definitely argue the console games look so much better. They're more polished. Uh, but they seem to have, I don't know, an affinity for it. Uh, and it's not influenced by me. I don't, I personally don't engage with uh, the VR device as often as they do. Right? Uh, so Mihai don't even tell his kids uh, he's working for Samsung. <laughs> <laughs> Just to they're protect oblivious. them. They're, they're too young. They don't understand anything. Um, uh, so that's the personal dimension. I've noticed that my kids love it, right? Um, in terms of uh, you know, broader engagement, mm -hmm. I can tell you that we are selling those things very fast. So there clearly is pent up demand in the market. Uh, there's also, if I look at the store, you know, the Oculus store, um, installs uh, of VR content are growing. And what we're seeing is that user constantly engage with new content. So there is repeat purchasing. Uh, which is a great indicator of in continued engagement with the platform. But they, they don't come back that often to the same experience. They, I think they're searching. I think, and you know, to be honest, we are at the beginning of exploration in the medium. Um, uh, I think we haven't found the killer apps yet, right? Mm -hmm. So I, I think the public is searching, it's engaging with the device, uh, it's retentive in a platform sense. I'm not necessarily sure the software within it is highly retentive, uh, but the platform itself is retentive. Um, and it shows that there is indeed a future for, for this medium, um, that um, the general public expects content. And our number one issue currently is the lack of high quality content covering all categories of gaming as well as practical applications. I think that's just mainly because developers jumping on it now are creating smaller experiences to showcase, to learn, uh, to understand how the platform works, because the platform and the input is still expanding all the time. So if they make an Oculus game two months ago and then they're making an Oculus game now, then they can target the touch controllers because they're now available. So like, the amount of experiences, there's, there's a lot of experience, but they're all like maybe five, ten minutes. So yeah, you don't want to go back to them. But there's a lot of developers I meet on the road creating... Uh, VR experience in games that can last up to 10 hours. So they're, they're going to be experience that people are going back to. And like you were saying about killer apps, and the killer apps are going to be the most social ones, where you're in this virtual environment with different avatars talking to your friends all around the world, kind of like a Skype, but like a Hangout, like Google Hangout, but, but virtually, and you can see everyone's bodies and avatars. Also, really quick, uh, more of a developer's perspective view. Uh, you said that VR is not that new, but as a platform, it's quite new. So uh, uh, I think that uh, when uh, there's going to be a lot of high-quality applications and covering a lot of spectrum, like multiplayer, like real-time multiplayer, like social, and all that stuff, then everybody can uh, look and find his comfort spot. Because right now you have few applications, everybody experienced it, and maybe going back once or twice or th three times but you don't have like a large pool of applications like you have on iPhone or an Android phone. I remember a few years ago uh, at GDC, uh, um, 
trying a, a, a game with a 3D stereoscopic in, a, in, a, in a, those 3D TVs that many of you probably have at home. I have one at home and they never turn on the, the 3D uh, content because I don't even have content. Why do you think uh, this is different in a way? I mean, that, that was, I mean, that was cool too. I mean, being, being able to, to look in, up in the screen and to see a 3D getting out of the screen, that was magic as well, right? It was like a, not it the same level shit, of really. measure. It was pretty shocking. But it's like, uh, it's, it's why, why it didn't bring, bring out like uh, interesting content for the people at that point in, in this, this new technology will, be, will do it? I think, I think you know, the, the comparison of 3D TV is made often, partly because of you're wearing something on your face, right? Just like 3D glasses. For me, it's, just, it's, a, it's an evolution. I mean, it's a, 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 an evolution of the same concept of visual immersion. Yeah, I think, I think, it's, I think there is a, there's definitely a visual immersion fa factor, but I think with, with the promise of VR, maybe we're not there today, but I think the promise of VR is that it's more of an interactive platform, and it's gonna, you're going to be able to tell stories in a format that you can't, in current interface devices and or hardware, right? So I don't know if we've hit that experience yet. You know, I had a really cool experience playing some demos where emotionally my body responded in a way that I wasn't prepared for it to respond to just because mm -hmm. I was tricked mm -hmm. in thinking something was happening that wasn't really happening. That's when it works the best. Um, I just don't know if you can create compelling experiences right now that, you know, goes beyond that sort of like, shock value, gimmick value at the moment. I haven't played anything where I, I could sit down on the couch for 10 hours and play like I can an awesome console game like The Witcher, right? Like, that's sort of, but I don't know if the platform's supposed to be there, right? I think we're all trying to figure it out. Um, but I think, like, the difference from 3D TV and the difference from what, how that platform worked is that it's interactive and, you know, 3D TV was an extension of existing media. This mm -hmm. is like, you know, porting stuff to VR is never going to work, in my opinion. You got to create experiences for that platform that are going to be unique. Okay, you all uh, agree? Yeah. Well, I also don't think that uh, comparison with 3D TV is the best way because what VR lets you do is experience yourself from your point of view, and even the 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 few seconds when you realize that you're moving your head and the, you're there and you're moving accordingly, this what uh, uh, helped me in, in the first moment to basically uh, put aside the VR experience as something totally new mm -hmm. from my side of view. Let me bring another topic uh, that I, I, I don't see many people mentioning, but um, how much care are we taking about the health? How, how, how healthy it is to the, the technology that we're building now? Um, I had the opportunity to speak with some, some experts on opticals, and they told me, I, I have a very, uh, quite bad problems in, in my eyes, I cannot see very well. Um, and I'm very concerned about everything that touches my eyes. Uh, should I be worried about that? Uh, is the industry taking care about that? Uh, depends on who used it before you did, right? Pardon me? It depends on who used it before you did, right? Yeah. How dirty their face was. Yep. No, I mean, I think there... <laughs> I think there's some problems with the interface right now, and that's one of the problems is like, do people want to be switching face juice with other human beings, you know? I think maybe you have your own thing, <laughs> maybe you have your own thing and you can have like your own kind of, you know, face guard put on there, but um, yeah, I mean, I generally don't like things on my face, and I generally think human beings don't like things on their face. Like, we wear glasses because we have to, Right, or we get contact lenses because we have to, or we wear sunglasses because it's sunny outside and we have to. I don't see people walking around with things on their face because they want to. And I think that's gonna be a big hurdle for visors when it gets to the mass, mass public, for sure. You know, there's a little thing called fashion where people will wear stuff because they want to. <laughs> but, <laughs> wait, wait, but, but, gla but glasses, like, but, you know, you, you, start at the, you start at the utilitarian need of like, I gotta see better, so I'm gonna get some trendy Gucci glasses, right? It's not like I'm gonna walk around wearing clear Gucci glasses. Maybe some people do that, but the, that's weird. <laughs> but, you, but you're talking I mean, about aesthetics, I'm talking about the health. Right, I mean, yeah. it can burn out your eyes or it can damage your eyes in a way to have the screen in front of you so close. Look, I, I, I don't think we're ready to make that determination. I don't think there's any credible study out there that says, you know, 
looking at VR But the industry is not even no. taking care about that. Well, that's actually not true. Um, uh, I know that Samsung has, uh, um, has supported uh, research in regards to a large variety of health concerns as far as VR. Um, um, you know, uh, we're talking about, you know, I mentioned earlier, there are, you know, you can have anxiety during uh, the VR experience. You can have eye stress, like, you, you know, your eyes could water. You can lose your sense of balance. Um, these are all um, effects that the minority of users are feeling, but we need to study them further, and we need to improve the technology in response for that. And, and I think uh, all VR platforms have made strides uh, towards improving that experience. And the, the reason VR did not succeed in the 90s, because you know, to, to your earlier point, I think there have been VR attempts way, like even in the 80s there was research in this area, in the 90s there have been some commercial devices uh, that uh, in, in the virtual uh, reality space. And they didn't uh, take off because not only the graphics were rudimentary, but the effect on the user was, uh, you know, quite, quite toxic. Lawn more man-ish? Yes, yes, absolutely. Mm -hmm. I think it's also just about being sensible with your usage. Like, I'm sure a lot of people have stayed up for 15 hours and played GTA. But like, people is not very sensible, right? Long, normal, so right? They watch TV for seven hours every evening when getting home. So yeah, if you if your eyes strain there, then you are gonna strain when when with a VR device. So have it just take regular bricks. It's just that kind of being sensible rather than spending five hours in a headset and then moaning you have a headache. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, from from a developer's perspective, why should I uh, be considering starting a VR project right now and investing my money and my time in a VR project? Uh, just a Quick note, from the developer's perspective, I think this is the ideal moment to actually develop VR because uh, engines and companies like Unity are putting a lot of effort in uh, enabling the developer to actually get straight to the content. So you as a developer are not that much worried right now because of a different platform or a different integration. You're just, um, if you can choose to go with an engine, then you are able to go straight to developing the content. So that's why I think this is a very good moment to develop VR. Because you can worry yourself about the content, about the ideas, about how you can experiment a lot of uh, uh, prototyping done really, really, really quick. I think um, if, I, if I were to take a, a stab at this, the market hasn't shown up yet for VR. And you know, depending on who you talk to, you know, the market will show up in uh, 2017, in 2018, or never, right? Um, and uh, my personal opinion is that it's still early, and it, we will need another couple of years of experimentation to get a critical mass. The reason to get into VR today is because you can experiment and be on the cusp of catching the wave of the market seeking that killer app. Um, and then you will explode. Um, if you look at the history of every emerging platform, let's look at mobile for a, sec for a second, right? The big hits on mobile were created by companies that went native first, experimented, perfected the formula, and then completely exploded. And, and you know, that's the story of Rovio, and that's the story of a Supercell, and that's the story of King. You know, they find the formula, they experiment with it, and then they ride the success of the platform. You cannot uh, simply join a platform once it is successful and expect to have the highest uh, returns on investment because the games are already played. You know, you'll have you know, massive studios created um, on specialization on that particular platform and dominating, mm -hmm. and then you have the publisher relationships that consolidate uh, over time and it becomes just harder to uh, to penetrate that space. Not impossible, you can still have later stage successes, but it's more difficult uh, to compete in a kind of crowded environment. Right now, there has been a tremendous amount of investment in the VR space, but the games are not played. You know, the, the formulas are not clear yet. We haven't found our magical free-to-play formula for, for VR. You know, that rule book, that playbook that, uh, that Scott showed us uh, earlier today, just doesn't exist. It has to be written. The companies that will figure that out mm -hmm. will win big time. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think, I think to sort of springboard off what Mihai's saying, there's, there's probably a couple ways that, a couple reasons why you should be working in VR right now. The first is what Mihai said, which is like you're, you believe in the platform, you believe in the future of the platform, and you want to be figuring it out before anybody else. 
right? Because just because no one's figured it out now doesn't mean like some team that's worked on it for two or three years is not going to come up with that experience where people go, wow, these guys cracked that, that nut, right? Um, and that's, you know, that's what any first platform devs will do, right? There's always that game that you remember on the platform that someone figured out and was like, okay, this is now making this platform relevant. So I think if you're passionate about the platform, you should be working on it. Um, I think the second thing is probably, you know, if you believe in the, the storytelling aspects and sort of the immersion and like what that platform, not just as a platform, but what that platform can bring to interactive entertainment that's different than any other platform. Um, because unless you're kind of thinking at it that way, uh, you're not, you're not going to succeed in my opinion because it, it has to be different enough. Uh, and then three, I would say there's probably some short-term goals. So like there's the company, I can't remember their name, I think it's Servios that just did raw data on Steam. Mm -hmm. um, those guys came first to market, super high quality VR experience, sold a mil you know, million units in, or a million dollars in the first month um, in a space where there's like not that many people making good shit, right? So, like, if you've got the team, you've got the passion, you can create an experience now, today, or, you know, a couple months from now, you could stand out on those bigger platforms because there's such a high adoption rate with hardcore PC uh, enthusiasts. So, mm -hmm. I it's, uh, you guys talk about the business aspe aspect as well, but when I was 12 years old, my teacher said, what do you want to do? And I said, I want to make games. Like, Why do you want to make games? I want to entertain people. I want to put people in these crazy worlds, I want them to have flying mechanics and shoot down aliens. And as a game developer, to be able to make a demo where you put the person in that scenario, they're not playing a character, they're playing themselves. And that's why developers who love games and want to show their creation to everybody, because it is an art form, to, to, put that, to put somebody in that world and they come out and like, wow, I was, in, I was in there, I was immersed in this situation and it felt amazing. And that's why I love making demos and prototypes and doing game jam games mm -hmm. and seeing developers, what developers create, because they want to put their players in, in those worlds. And they can be the first people to do that and, and yeah, capture that market. But the, the first people to, to get the consumer goods are, are going to be in those worlds that, that you've created. We have, can I take one more stab yes. at this? Um, there's another criteria. Um, on the economic end of things that should make you pause and consider VR. And that is, it's not yet a super crowded space, but all the big players are really keen on content right now. So you may have, as an independent developer that doesn't have fabulous publishing relationships all over the world, you may find a more uh, welcoming reception uh, from the likes of Samsung or Oculus or um, Valve or whoever it may be um, or at promoting your content or obtaining developer funds to support your concepts. Um, so, you know, in the mobile space, you know, getting promoted on Apple, Google Play, um, uh, extremely difficult. Um, all the big publishers, all the big developers are taking the prime real estate with, every, with, with their every new release. As an indie developer, you'll find it quite challenging to, uh, to be noticed. Uh, but on VR, if you are an indie developer and you're submitting to, to the Gear VR platform, uh, you know, in the Oculus Store we have a Samsung section and we will promote every new piece of content that comes into our store. Um, so it, uh, it, it's very democratic right now. In the future, it will probably become harder to do that uh, when you have thousands and thousands of submissions every week, as it happens now on mobile. It's still, it's still somewhat a blue ocean in regards to that regard. Yes. Yeah. And I love the artistic aspect of figuring this out. I mean, uh, true creative freedom. I, in a sense, what Scott shared with us uh, earlier about mobile, um, you know, that formula, that recipe of success, it's also a great constraining factor from a creative standpoint. I mean, you have to uh, abide by uh, what we know works. And you don't have that constraint in, uh, in VR, and that can be liberating, artistically speaking. Mm -hmm. we, we haven't mentioned uh, augmented reality yet, and uh, should, should, we, should we make a distinction, distinction between VR and AR? Or are we talking about the same? Well, now they're pretty distinct. 
but I think uh, that AR is going to be uh, basically merged with VR. So probably you can just use the world around you as a marker because this is what, in my perspective, this is what constraints AR right now very much because that you actually need a marker. Mm -hmm. So when this thing disappears, I think AR is going to be at least that big than VR. I'm personally most excited about mixed reality because that's augmented reality with actual interactivity with a physical but that, world. Those are, those are very academic concepts from the... I like the way he said that, though. I like the way he said mixed reality instead of... AR. I, so I, I think like AR comes with the connotation uh, of like video game graphics on the real world, which yeah. is not necessarily that cool. Like people have been doing that for a long time and it's never been awesome. Like figuring out an interactive experience that exists in your real world like Pokemon Go, right? Could, it is, I think, something really interesting. Mm -hmm. Sorry, just... No, I, I, I agree with the term. I'm, I, I'm just saying that we are inventing, uh, we've been inventing for 20 years different terms. Yeah. But at the end, they are collapsed into one single concept. There is immers immersion, it's like a uh, mixed reality, probably, right? So I think mixed reality is super exciting and probably it has bigger functional applications than VR. Like, if you think a little bit beyond games, of course, like, you know, things like communication and, and getting more information out of your environment is a, um, you know, great fit for a mixed reality uh, platform. Um, I think also, f uh, you know, trying to make a game experience integrate with the real world uh, gives it an added sense of immediacy uh, while not ripping away that immersion. From, from a certain standpoint, uh, you could argue that virtual reality is tr truly the more artful platform because you can recreate everything. You know, it's the painter's brush that um, uh, that creates that work of art entirely, right? Uh, uh, and uh, any augmented reality gaming experience would just fill in the blanks with you know cute characters and you know dungeons and interactive elements. Um, but in the broader sense, as a human application. Mixed reality is the future. Is the will be the most commercially successful platform, I think. And and it looks like we are not talking that much about games anymore. It looks like uh, maybe VR and, and, and similar technologies will help games converge with other media even more than 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 previous technologies. How how do you think games will converge with other media? Are we creating a new kind of um, I don't know entertainment? Uh, media, or, or should we should we we still be speaking about video games in in VR? I, I love the idea uh, represented in Ready Player One of Oasis for anybody that's read that book, which is it's a metaverse, right? It's not a singular product; it's a metaverse of products and worlds and universes. And you can go to school, and you can go to parties, and you can like sit in a chat room and like. You can, you know, buy clothes and go shopping. Like, I think that is a really interesting way to look at VR and like what the future of VR could be. Right? It is basically an interactive version of the World Wide Web. Mm -hmm. So you could have games, you could have applications, you could have whatever, but you're accessing it in this sort of, you know, um, first-person metaverse, Philip K. Dick navigation thing going on. Right. Mm -hmm. Clearly, Scott is in Elon Musk's uh, camp, and he <laughs> thinks that current reality is a simulation. So. Mm -hmm. Could be. Mm -hmm. uh, of Could a be. very advanced uh, civilization. I have to admire the processing power. I don't know why I feel so tired after like flying over from San Francisco, but <laughs> it feels like a bug, <laughs> right? <He's awake. laughs> I shouldn't. You need lots of caffeine. <laughs> so, um, I would like you, you guys to, to start thinking about uh, questions, potential questions that you want to, to bring in the table uh, for the panelists. And uh, meanwhile, I would ask you, what are, the, what are the challenges that you think that we have to face in the near future uh, from all your points of view, I would like to? It's just, just getting players to play the game, it's getting normal consumers. I mean, I can't wait until you can go into to game or Marks and Spencers or John Lewis and actually see a, a, an Oculus or a Vive set up and you're like, hey, mum, come try this. This is amazing. It's at all the developer conferences, but now it's in store. And that's the thing that we're missing out on so much is the 
general consumers know what VR is, they'll think, oh, it's these goggle things. But they actually have not experienced it for themselves and have not tried the interactivity and what it can bring to them. Uh, I've just taken my Gear VR home to my mum and my sister and given them a 360 image. And they was like, wow, this is amazing. I can see the Grand Canyon. I'm like, click the next button. And they go to like a waterfall in Tokyo and like, oh, wow, this is amazing. But I'm like, you have seen nothing. Wait till you come to my house and try my vibe in my living room. Like, they're, they're just being introduced to 360 images now because they're not part of what we're part of. And, uh, so yeah, it's just getting people to try the actual devices. I, can, I cannot emphasize that strongly enough. I mean, in this audience, you'd be like, okay, VR is already you know, a passe thing. Like, we played with it, we've kind of figured out, we already decided we don't want to do something with it, or we're totally into it and we're developing for it as we speak. But outside in the real world, people still don't know what that is, you know, and they haven't gotten past the, oh, those are the funny looking goggles that you put on your eyes. Um, so I think, you know, as far as Samsung is concerned, you know, primary thing, push more devices, which means educating the market. Uh, second thing, identify, promote, or develop the indispensable services for VR, because we haven't figured that part out uh, completely yet either. Um, you know, I mentioned 360 video, we created um, uh, um, a software to, to distribute 360 video called Samsung VR. Um, and that's just like one element of the many that we have to figure out. You know, we have to figure out the internet browsing experience in a VR environment to not just have a 2D implementation of it, but make fully leverage that space, transform the internet in a metaverse, in a um, uh, Gibson, Metaverse, uh, not, not just player, uh, player one's uh, version of it. Um, and uh, uh, beyond that, uh, you know, we have to think about all the critical utilitarian functions that we use in a day-to-day -day life and how they will apply to a VR environment. How does email look in a VR environment? Again, if you're limiting to the 2D interface, then you're doing a disservice to the, sp to the medium. We haven't figured those things out. So you know, I think that should be a major focus for us. I think the biggest challenge VR has right now is that it, it, it's a platform that has to be acquired by the public, right? Like, I think the, the comparison is made to mobile often by, by people that are funding VR that it's the next mobile platform, it's the mobile destroyer, right? It's going to be the next mobile platform. But what people forget is that mobile phones came before mobile games. And, you know, everybody in this room, you know, 10 years ago had a mobile phone in their pocket. Um, how many people in this room own VR right now? I'm just curious. All right. A few. Um, but it's not as ubiquitous, and it's a platform that you have to acquire for the purpose of VR. So I think until we can kind of crack that nut, um, or until there's that thing that really, you know, that content that really makes people want to acquire the platform, it's going to be challenged. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, if we're trying relative sizes, like how big will be the VR market? You know, you'll, you'll find analyst estimates currently that are, you know, exceptionally optimistic. And I would discount that by a factor of 10. Like, history has proven that, you know, analyst estimates, you know, divided by 10 equals kind of uh, the space that we will inhabit. Currently, analysts are seeing this uh, space uh, developing to about $100 billion per, per year in the revenues. So I would say that if we stabilize around $10 billion per year, it will be... Uh, Probably really good. I mean, think, think about it. $10 billion space is bigger than uh, social games at the highest reaches. Will it ever be as big as mobile? Absolutely not, for the very reason that Scott mentioned, which is mobile, uh, from a utilitarian perspective, means so much more. It's not just games. It's not just a, um, let's say, distinct experience uh, that you are enjoying uh, sparingly in your, in your free time but uh, rather something essential to your day-to-day -day, uh, life. Um, so VR is limited by that, uh, but I think VR has, unlike mobile, has the capacity to deliver richer experiences than ever conceived on any other platform. Richer than film, richer than AAA console games, certainly richer than mobile games. Um, so I think the people that are excited about VR, they see that potential, I think that's what drives them, um, and uh, being able to deliver, to manufacture a world that can be experienced by other with, with uh, additional senses, with a full sensorial perception. I think it's one step further mm -hmm. to that ultimate goal of creating worlds. Mm -hmm. um, what are the, the main uh, 
the main errors, uh, the main mistakes that uh, developers are doing right now, the developers are facing virtual reality, what do you think they are doing wrong, I mean, in general? Well, I, mean, I mean, two years ago, everyone was making roller coaster demos. <laughs> that, was, that was the main thing wrong with it, and uh, giving it to people with a DK2, and they never came back. Uh, mm -hmm. Now is trying to figure out locomotion, that's, that's still, a, still a really hard thing. So many experiments going on the way with that and uh, testing on different people. But again, most of the people who are testing and trying it are developers who are interested in it, not people, general consumers. Uh, the next thing is uh, trying to make everything ultra high realistic. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's not going to happen on a mobile phone, no matter how powerful they're going to get. People want to be transported to, to different worlds, uh, not just in the same world that we're in now. And... Uh, the third one is uh, people doing VR just because it, it is getting popular, just doing it for no reason. And they're not actually understanding that it is a brand new medium. And people are thinking they can take old concepts of games and just bringing it. I think that's, to, the, yeah, that's, a, that's the, one of the biggest challenges. Exactly. Like, people, people trying to make first person shooters, we were like running around on, in VR is like, that's like, you know, puke zone in like two minutes. Yeah, like, oh, yeah, let's bring Call of Duty to VR because everybody loves Call of Duty, so they must love their Call of Duty VR. Like, no, it's not going to work like this. Not unless you make it an uh, RPG like Scott did with Doom, right? For <laughs> <laughs> you know, I think the, the best... Bard's Tale. I think the best demo I've tried, apart from The Void, uh, that I was lucky enough to, to try... Uh, that's, is that actual... Is that visor or is that in a room? That's in a... That's in a room, like in this size, yeah. a little bit more, and it's like, like a labyrinth, and, uh, and you just walk freely. I mean, everything is great. That's everything. awesome. Like, it's, that's it's amazing. Like, that's what I'm talking about. Like, more people can nail that, because then you don't have to shit on your face. People are going to be, you know. Yeah, that's... No, you, that's do, you do have the goggles. You do have the glasses, face. but it doesn't feel like that. It feels like, a, I mean, in, in my, my mind, it remains as a memory that I've been in, that, in those places. It's like, uh, like you, 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 what you see, you can touch it. And, uh, and it's, uh, it makes a totally different experience. That, that's the, the only real virtual reality thing that I tried. And uh, in, the, in the virtual reality consumer space, the demo that I like the most is the painting demo, the 3D painting demo. Right, yeah, it's but I, I think, I think uh, it's related to the, to the um, opportunity to experience things in the reach of your hands. I mean, most of the, that, that's my opinion, of course, but many developers, I think they are trying to visit new places and to explore worlds and to shoot people or, or characters that are moving around, and it's a lot of movement. And if I had to do a, a virtual reality demo or application myself, I always say that I would do, I would do something like, a, like a becoming a magician, like doing like a, some magic in this table here that I have here. I think that could be much more engaging than other applications. So I think one of the mistakes, in my opinion, of course, is that they are trying to use the whole capability, the whole potential that virtual reality has in, in, in the future, they are trying to use it now, instead of concentrating in, in wow, this, we have this amazing technology now, how can we do something that fits the, the actual technology that we have? That's, that's just my opinion. Um, um, before we move on to the yeah. next uh, topic, I um, just wanted to give you a kind of a business uh, answer to your question, which are what are the mistakes uh, we're seeing people making. Uh, a lot of developers only have short-term plans, mm -hmm. like especially yep. in the indie space, they're like all resources in for creating a piece of content, mm -hmm. and then they'll release that content, and there's no market there. Yeah. But and that's, that's uh, something that the small developers do, not only in VR, that's but That's the cash-in, though. That's the cash-in with like, the, yeah. the, the, the venture money that's going into VR, right? Like, yeah. People are like, hey, we'll get funded. Let's yes. make a game and like, not think about the platform. Yeah. Let's just right. get paid to make something. Right? Awesome. So that, that's what you said before. You have to, to have a plan. You have to uh, learn about yeah. this new media and, and try to, to envision what it's what you're doing 10 years from VR now. VR is the long game. So, you know, some of these indie developers, they actually sold this story to, to venture capitalists that is probably a lot rosier than the reality. And I think that it will come back and bite them. Mm -hmm. uh, and we're seeing that a little bit in the market and we'll probably see that in 2017 as well. 
So the advice, if you're in VR, be in the long game and think of what you need to survive in the long haul. And probably now, that means partnering with platforms. It means mm -hmm. trying to harvest some of these developer mm -hmm. dollars. Uh, it means also creating some content for you know advertising purposes. Mm -hmm. It may not be you know the full realization of your craft and of your potential, but it will put food on the table and it will allow you to continue to experiment and get better. So, so you know have the long game. I think that is very very wise advice uh, about VR and you know stay put. You know this is a perfectly viable platform. Even according to my conservative estimate, a ten billion dollar market per annum is nothing to scoff at if you have a good proportion of that. Mm -hmm. What I think we do really well as, as an industry in games as well is share our experiences. I say this quite a lot and we work with a lot of like B2B or enterprise and automotive who are doing VR and they have a small team locked in a room making a lot of mistakes and their R&D and then just scrapping things and trying again and then they don't share those experiences with other people where the game industry is really open and a guy will stand on stage and say we tried this, it didn't work, it was terrible. So we changed the direction and we did this instead and this works because of this reason. We're sharing games and gameplay and footage and everything online because we all uh, succeed if the platform succeeds, and then the, the platform succeeds if all the developers succeed. So people, like every single platform that we speak, we speak to Samsung, Oculus, uh, Vive, and HTC, and they're all working together to make sure the platform succeeds and the developers succeed as a whole, not just uh, special, like specific ones. So that's really good as the industry. Mm -hmm. uh, just a small thing. <clears throat> Another commonly uh, error that it's made is maybe that the developers don't think that much at the platform itself because you cannot have the same goals or uh, aim to deliver the same experiences when talking about uh, mobile uh, VR with a, a Rift or a Vive. So you as a developer should really understand what the platform is and how it is supposed to be delivered content on it. Uh, for instance, on Gear VR and other mobile platform, maybe it's better to target shorter and intenser experiences rather than nine hours gameplay, because nobody is gonna uh, have the tech at least for now to run a nine hour yeah. uh, VR. So um, uh, once you experience, experience each platform, you kind of get the hang of it, mm -hmm. but you have to stick to what you learn. Mm -hmm. Also, the, blo the phone might blow up in your face as well if you. Yeah. Spin. Well, act actually, that, that's very true. And I think, I think that happened with a mobile platform as well. It took a long road to realize for the developers, for all of us, to realize what the platform was. And when we thought that we already realized what the platform was, we realized that what we call mobile games are actually only small screen games until something like Ingress or Pokemon Go that has been there for a while, demonstrates that maybe mobile games is more about mobile, mobility, right? It's not about only a, a small screen games. So it takes, it takes a long road to realize the power of a platform. As a quick example, I remember first time when I experienced uh, Gear VR, how beautiful was the experience with Lens End that was totally tricking your mind that you're there, even if it was like, really super low poly environment, mm -hmm. but the music and the perspective was there. So what the developer did was that they understood the, 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 the platform and delivered accordingly. Mm -hmm. It's been quite hard actually because the input has been changed and there's no default input yet. You're looking at Google Cardboard and gear and then you're looking at PSVR and Oculus with controllers and then you're looking at Vive with tracked. So it, yeah, it's hard to understand what platform does what, and then all of a sudden Daydream comes out with a controller with a gyroscope and accelerometer. So is that going to be the new default platform? Uh, who knows what's going to happen? I always use the example of when the, the first iPhone was released, and the guy came on stage and he swiped to unlock, and it, everyone, like, minds just exploded because that had never happened before. Swiping. Yeah, he just went, and it unlocked. Well, I have to say, my eyes, all, uh, my eyes uh, were about Ass. to explode the other day because I tried with a Note 7. The, the, yeah. the Samsung year, and we're, we're about to explode as well. <laughs> that will make it a very real experience for you when it happens. <laughs> you can actually feel the burn. Really personal. <laughs> That's real reality. That's not virtual reality. <laughs> so, uh, time for a few questions. Uh, I'm sure on this topic you you will have some questions for the panelists, and I'd like to start with. You know, I, I'd like to start with this one because it's the only one that I can see. <laughs> can can we? 
Uh, thanks, guys. That was awesome. Uh, first of all, you guys talk about virtual reality as a platform, but I think it should be defined as a medium only. They can have different platforms for virtual reality, but it, it really should be a medium because it's how we're experiencing it first. Uh, second, historically, anytime we have a new medium, uh, it's always been introduced in a way that it brings a, a reality to us, not necessarily a virtual one that's manufactured. Radio, television, everything that's ever been created mm -hmm. always started with the reality. Shouldn't the first applications of this be taking us someplace that exists that we can't get there right now? Um, but not, not a manufactured one. No. So I, I, that's why the highest usage uh, of content currently on the Gear VR is the 360 video. People love to be transported to, you know, a top of the mountain or, you know, to somebody that uh, jumps off a plane with a parachute or somebody that is skiing, uh, you know, in a really amazing environment. It, it, it is providing you with a better means to experience that feeling of, uh, of freedom, right? Because you can look everywhere. It, it really, it, it's one step closer to being there in person. So... But these are still produced, and I think, I, think there's, I think those are valuable, but I think there's also uh, news events or sports events that happen live that I think it would be awesome to actually be in those things, in the arena, or let's say if you were there at the Arab Spring, for example, I think it would be a lot more powerful and a change to humanity than just creating an artificial world. You're talking about 360 video broadcasts. Uh, and I think we've had some events that were broadcast in this fashion. Like, for example, uh, Samsung is partnering with CNN to uh, broadcast uh, the, f the first presidential debate between Trump and, and Hillary uh, in 360 tonight. video. That's tonight, right? That's tonight. Should be, should be good. I'm scared. <laughs> I'm really scared. But <laughs> Did Samsung bring VR headsets for all of us to watch the presidential debate? Uh, yes, uh, that's a good idea. <laughs> I, I definitely agree. Uh, we sh yeah, we, we should be using the word medium. Like, I don't like using the term VR game because I personally think it, every game is an experience. And no matter what you're doing, it's still an experience rather than a game. So yeah, it's a, it's a game on the platform, on a medium. And as Kant mentioned, the, the ultimate experience in this, in this uh, that was a porn, right? Yeah. And I think like, <laughs> if, yeah, porn. If you're, I think if you're, you know, if you look at the, the first films, right, like to your point, like they, I can't remember what it was called, but it was like a, a, a train coming out of the, the screen. Uh, and you know, people went, first went to see it back in like the turn of the century. They would jump out of the way because they thought the train was coming out of the wall at them. Mm -hmm. Like that's kind of how I could feel we are with VR right now, right? Like we're kind of these stupid monkeys. <laughs> uh, our bodies can't figure out like what's going on psychologically. So like when you stand on the edge and you look over on that like Oculus demo, you like, you think you get vertigo, you think you're gonna fall. Um, so I don't know if like the experience has to be like real world stuff. I think it's, you know, like any medium, like books, movies, it can be fiction or it can be nonfiction, right? Yeah, it could, but I think the first ones that are introduced just to get us familiar. Yeah, and that's what they did with film, right? And then, you know, the Meliers and Lumiere, they started coming out with like more fantastical stuff, but, um, you know, yes. But, but um, when you mention things that we already know, or places that we, we have already been to, uh, could we include uh, games on that? I mean, I've been in many game worlds that for me are as real as reality. So if you are talking to that um, uh, generation of people that have been playing games uh, for many years, those places are real in a way. So I think, I think, his, I think the, the approach you're taking is an approach to make it more mass market, right? Like, but mass market has played video games. Uh, yeah, but I guess like if I if, if I if I hand a VR headset to my mom, right, and I go I go hey, go to Mars and fight these aliens, or I go hey, go to the Parthenon and explore it. Like she's gonna choose Parthenon because it's like she's never. In been In my there. case, I don't think you should care about my mom <laughs> <laughs> if you're if you're, if you're doing VR. No, I mean trying to, to look ahead in the, in this ten ten years window or whatever. So you think uh, it's only gonna be hardcore? No, no, not, not hardcore, not at all. I mean, I'm, uh, I'm, not, I'm not meaning hardcore, but I'm meaning that uh, um, we have developed a language uh, that is uh, well known by, by most of the people. 
and we we don't have to step back from that language and from those things that we're already used to. I mean, we we have been um, uh, interacting with things. We know when we see a, a screen, we, we know we can touch it. We know that if we move our hand, something can happen. Uh, there are a lot of interactive things happening around us that we understand are natural now for, for us. So not, I mean, we can take advantage of that and we don't necessarily have to, um, to um, step back and try to to go into more es essential things. Because many things that are virtual are for many of us, I mean, for most of us, real, including the money. I mean, everything. That was deep, dude. Yeah, that was I'm meta. Right. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, I, like, I like what you were saying there about, uh, about consumers and making it, s the, big, the biggest ones are gonna be social. Like what people do on Facebook now, they upload a 360 image and they can share where they've been with their friends and then they can put that in a headset and they can look around at someone's holiday pictures. So yeah, that, hey, that's come to my 18th birthday party. Oh, you yeah. can't make it? Bonk. Yeah. <laughs> What's up? Right? Like, exactly, yeah. So that's what the killer apps are going to be. They're, they're going to be the social ones and introduce it to the, the mass market of consumers. Okay. Ivan, I'm surprised that you haven't asked already, like, what's after all of these VR, AR stuff? You know, and... You know. Because I know. <laughs> I only ask things I that I don't know. I was on the list, so I was wondering. Like, I know exactly what that he's working on already, and he don't want to share. I saw, I saw the, 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 picture, uh, the demos of uh, uh, PlayStation VR, uh, where you can get close to the student, and you can be the sensei of the young student. I know what is behind all, all this. So that's why I didn't ask. You know the video I'm talking about, right? It's the PlayStation VR is launching a game where basically you have the capability of uh, being the sensei, the professor, like a teacher of a very young uh, girl. And you can be there and it, she gets really close to you and you just teach her. I mean, you just... Is that a porn reference? I'm, I'm, I'm no, really confused here. It's not porn. <laughs> a very subtle one. That's not porn. <laughs> That's an experience. That's teletransportation to a place where you, that you know and you want to be, right? Okay. <laughs> Let's move to the next question, please. Uh, this is going really politically Nestor. incorrect now. Nestor yes. has a question. Apparently. Um, I t it's been a while, I kind of forgot. Um, so uh, let me move it to the opposite problem for a second. Like I bought into VR really quickly because I'm a crazy person, so I've been engaging with this for a while. Um, who's making my 2.0? Because I've played all the mini games on Steam. I'm done with that stuff who's making the next thing for me, because I'm supposed to be the promoter of this thing, right? I'm supposed to be the guy, hey, come over to my house, I'll show you. But right now, I've kind of, I'm done with that. Like, we've all played all those mini games. So who's building the big experience for me to make? Because all of you guys are still talking about acquisition and 1.0 experiences. Where's the funding to make the big 2.0 a uh, big game that I want right now after a year of VR? Um, well, so uh, Sony has a great track record of funding their platforms. So I think the immediate answer is there. Uh, Samsung is focused on the 360 video, so the content creation, but video, not necessarily gaming, because gaming is not a great use case for the Gear VR compared to the other uh, VR purveyors. Um, I am not sure what HTC's long-term plans are. That's a big question mark. I do think that Oculus uh, will continue to fund gaming. Uh, and they have actually, uh, to date, it's uh, Oculus, or Facebook in other words, that has made the greatest investments in VR studios, not Sony. But we're hoping that Sony will come to the fore and um, support the AAA experiences that you're looking for, right? And uh, so, fingers crossed on that. Yeah, I, I uh, meet a lot of developers who are in it for the long run. They're making a, a two-year game that's going to be five to ten hours of like gameplay and a long, long campaign. So, I mean, yeah, they're not going to start showing it right now because they've only been working on it maybe eight to ten months. But, yeah, we see so many of them who tell us that that's what's coming and we're seeing videos and screenshots and, uh, yeah, things that are going to be out like, next year. It's definitely, it's definitely happening. I think uh, a lot of exciting content will be released in the next period of time. Uh, people have, we're right on the cusp of like starting to see that because people have now got some experience under their belt. They figure out some of the mechanics that work on VR. So 
you know, watch this space in the next year will be make or break in terms of the quality of the content. If uh, at the end of next year we still don't have, you know, AAA uh, experiences for VR that are absolutely killer for for the uh, for the platform, then we're in big trouble. Okay, one last question before Catalin gets uh, really nervous. I don't know where he is, but I know. Catalin is already really nervous. Yeah. So yeah. He's been nervous all day. <laughs> Maybe he'll but, get completely I mean, like, stress-free because it's like so off schedule and he, he can relax now. I mean, I could be here for the rest of the day, but uh, I, I think uh, we need to... I to have a question around the business model. We've all seen that in the past years, the mobile gaming industry's best practice was the freemium one. What are your thoughts around the mobile virtual reality one, uh, taking into consideration that you also need some extra accessories to enter? Will it be freemium? Will it go to something more premium? What are your thoughts on this? Uh, I think, it, again, it depends on the platform. If you're looking at mobile, uh, even mobile started premium. Most, like what, first four years of mobile was premium until people started realizing people hate spending 79 cents on a, on a game for some reason. Uh, but then I think the, the, major, the major players and the, the big games are going to still be premium for, for some time. Uh, but you're going to be looking, like a lot of people are looking at ourselves, Unity, uh, Unity Ads, are looking into a VR view for advertisements as well. So you... They might be looking into that in the future and, and seeing how people react to that. And it, it might not be ready for another four or five years until the, the premium mobile games get out of the way and then people accept that's just a new, new way to display ads. It depends on what people take. I'm just as scared of being playing Call of Duty VR and, and suddenly being transported to uh, McDonald's or something. <laughs> <laughs> I, think, I, I think that the reason free-to-play on mobile worked when it worked was because the adoption of the platform was just so massive, right? Like in order for free to play to work, you have to have millions of users uh, to be able to convert at one to 2%. Um, until you have sort of mass adoption of VR headsets and equipment, like free to play is gonna be challenged on that platform because you're not gonna make any money. Um, so I think it's probably gonna have to be paid until you can figure out if there's enough people to, mm -hmm. to engage with the platform. Another way to answer this question is to look at what the luminaries in the field are doing. So I'll give you the example of Tommy Palm, who, the creator of Candy Crush. He created, he truly believes in the VR space, so he created his own studio to uh, produce VR games. Uh, his first game that he made was completely free. Like he didn't even try to monetize it in any way because he was trying to figure out the platform, so he released it. And now he is working on a free-to-play title with in-app purchase. So, um, I think that a lot of the developers that are looking at mobile VR, they know that this is going to either be a mass market phenomena or it will never show up. So, and if it's going to be a mass market phenomena, you need a free-to-play business model. If, if I were to give you some advice, if you're pondering creating a game for the Gear VR, uh, please make it uh, a freemium game. If you're going to make games for PlayStation VR or um, the HTC Vive uh, or the Oculus Rift, you can consider premium, especially if you're thinking of a 10-hour experience, AAA console quality um, in terms of... Uh, I think people who are adopting even mobile headsets are willing to pay right now because there isn't a, a great amount of content. So the content that is there and it is good quality, then they are still willing to pay right now. So I think you could still yeah. manage to do Pre something. Premium is certainly feasible right now. Mm -hmm. True. Okay, so do you have one question? Last one. The really, the really last one. Yeah. Hi. Uh, this is more for me. Hi, I think. You mentioned that Samsung is developing uh, the processing power and you want to reach PlayStation level by 2020. Is anything being done on the mobile side in terms of adding peripherals that would help with VR? Because uh, what Pokemon Go did was take what was already there, but like, if mobile devices would already have you know, stereo cameras or um, maybe more tracking that would help the limbs uh, track the height of the player, then that would really help a lot. Do you know if any research is being done in that? Um, so, great question. What I was referring to is the actual capability of the mobile device itself without any added peripherals. You're, you're not basically plugging into something that, that contains a video card. It's basically the processor on uh, the chipset on your phone will be able to handle 
uh, higher order uh, graphical processing demand. Um, so that's the, that is the uh, the goal of Samsung, and indeed every year we're getting one step closer to that. Very well, also cool. Like he asked if there'd be like a height sensor in the phone to see how far off the ground, so you could duck and dodge around. Mm. Can you imagine being in that kind of? I actually meant even uh, make it more immersive. You could actually walk in the real world if you had if you had the ca you could turn it into a Hololens if you want, if you want. Because um, we already have the mount for it, and those would be sensors in the Gear VR headset itself. And yes, that's definitely something we're looking at. We're also looking at standalone VR experience without a mobile device as part of the roadmap. Okay, so uh, it's been great being here once again. Thank you very much for attending this, uh, this uh, panel, and thank you guys for participating. Thank you very much. Thanks, Ivan. Thank you. Best moderator ever. <laughs>